Hello, hello friends. Well, look at me here. I am just giving you a variety of different brands of candle reviews this week. And today we are going to be talking about Yankee Candles Peppermint Pinwheels. I am going to apologize right away for the annoying beeping sound in the background. My smoke detectors, even though they are wired to my home electrical system, have decided that they need to let me know that the batteries need to be replaced. So I hope you guys can tune that out. Also, um, I'm doing a little bit of pre-filming, so the um, there might be a little bit of background noise between the laundry going, or you might hear some children, and you know what, that's just life on the puppy farm, as my mother used to say. So what what are we talking about here? Like I said earlier, this is going to be Peppermint Pinwheels. This is a new release, I believe, from Yankee Candle this year. Now I believe um, that there has been a little bit of controversy around this one because one of their fan favorites, Candy Cane Lane, um, I believe may have been discontinued. To be honest with you guys, I have not purchased from Yankee Candle in quite some time. Um, I am not really somebody who is a huge fan of paraffin wax formulas, just because they burn quite slowly and sometimes they can be a little bit of a dirtier burn. However, upon a trip last weekend to the mall, um, it was during Black Friday, and I thought, you know what, I had heard a couple of reviews about this particular candle, and I have also heard um, some rumblings with in the home fragrance community about these signature collection jars doing a little bit better over their traditional like single wick um, classic jars. So while I was at the mall, I decided to take advantage of the sale. I went into store, sniffed this one, um, picked up a couple of other ones, which if you caught my part one of Black Friday haul, you will know the other candles that I picked up. Um, and, and I liked this one, I, I really did on cold sniff. However, I do know that upon reading reviews online, a lot of people are upset because they said, is this supposed to be replacing Candy Cane Lane? Um, because these two scents are nowhere near each other. Now, the scent notes on this one are the top notes are sparkling peppermint, melted butter, sea salt. The mid notes are kettle corn, crushed candy cane, winter mint, and the base notes are whipped vanilla, dark chocolate, and frosted spearmint. So what does my nose smell with this candle? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, I do smell a little bit of peppermint, but this is definitely a gourmand peppermint. And even not, it, it's not even like a peppermint sugar cookie or nothing like that. I actually am, quite thrilled when I looked up the notes of this again to see that uh, one of the notes that I detect the most in here um, is actually listed and that is in the base notes. I, I smell cocoa in this one. I smell that dark chocolate. Now this I would not describe as a chocolate candle and I wouldn't even say that this is like um, the peppermint is it peppermint hot cocoa from Kringle the one that they just brought back on cold sniff these two smell very different from each other this is not like a um, a peppermint hot chocolate scent this is like a, a tie together of peppermint with a cookie with a little bit of chocolate in there it's actually kind of um hard for me to describe the complexity of this scent. I personally really like it. Is it one that I think that I'm going to need year after year? No, but it is one that I am glad that I have picked up because I am enjoying the scent. I find that it is a nice complimentary scent to some of the other peppermint candles that I have in my collection, a la Crushed Candy Cane from Bath & Body Works. Um, I also have Peppermint Snowdrop from Homeworks. If you have Twisted Peppermint or maybe that peppermint, is it peppermint sugar cookie or peppermint? Mint. What? Which other one is it from Bath and Body Works? The, I know that they have like a peppermint cookie type of candle. Um, this one complements those other ones very well, especially if you're going from one that's like super sweet and sugary to this one. This is definitely much more of a gourmand, um, but not sugar cookie gourmand. It's very difficult kind of for me to describe. I do pick up a little bit of that melted butter note um, slight saltiness. Um, kettle corn is an interesting note that they have listed in here because maybe, maybe what that is lending is a little bit of the, um, I, I keep going back to like, there's like a, 
chocolatey gourmand note in here, but it's not like a hot cocoa scent. Very complex. Now I will say, um, and I feel like somebody touched on this in the reviews online, this scent um, is sailing perilously close to the window of crossing over into it can almost, if you let it burn too long, start to develop almost like a cigarette type of smell, which sounds really bad because I, I despise that scent. I, no offense if you are a smoker, but I do not like the smell of cigarette smoke one bit. Um, and I feel like I, I can see where somebody said, this one kind of smells like smoke to me, like cigarette smoke. If it burns a little bit too long, I think that it can do that. Um, but if you keep it within maybe that three hour burn window, I don't, I think that you will get ahead of that and not smell that. But when the person mentioned that in the review and I was burning this, I thought, yeah, I, I kind of see what that person is talking about, but it's not overly, um, that type of scent for me. This is, this is honestly kind of a, a complex scent to me. Now I, I have never eaten a peppermint pinwheel. Apparently this is a type of candy. Um, nobody in my family particularly loves peppermint. Well, no lies. My oldest daughter likes like York peppermint patties and stuff, but peppermint is not something that my family just typically goes crazy for. So maybe that's why I'm just not as familiar with a peppermint pinwheel. But I do like this scent. So let's go ahead and talk about the performance of it because um, like I said, that is why I have kind of avoided buying Yankee Candle <clears throat> for the past few years. Now, truth be told, Yankee Candle is actually what um, opened my eyes to the world of home fragrance because this is the candle brand that my mother used to purchase from when I was a child. So I've always been familiar with Yankee. I remember going into the stores and sniffing and um, and even when I got married and, and had my own home, Yankee was typically my go-to candle brand that I would purchase from. Um, the performance on this one has been pretty good. You can see right in front of me here that um, it pulls out very quickly and easily. I would say that I achieve a full pull on the first burn. Um, it completely pulled out within about 35 minutes. So that's pretty good. There are two wicks in this formula. Now this is their large signature collection jar. Um, so yeah, the wax pulls out very nicely. I'm having very little residue along the sides as the wax pool goes down with each burn. Now you will see along the rim of the glass that there is a little bit of sootiness going on, which again, that's kind of been my hesitation with Yankee is I don't like how dirty sometimes this burns. Um, you know, I, I've gotten I've gotten a little bit spoiled with like Kringle's soy formula not doing this. Um, you know, even even my homeworks candles rarely do the sooty the sooty game here. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed to see that. However, it's not anything that is um, at this point making me say, oh, I'm never going to burn this candle again because I do like the smell and overall I feel like. Um, it, it's burning decently for me. Strength and throw of this one. Strength of this candle, I would say is about like a six, um, six and a half. Enough to know that it's there, but it's not knocking my socks off. I typically find that most candles that I have been purchasing recently are falling within that um, six to seven range, which honestly, for me personally, I would say seven and a half, eight is honestly like my ideal perfect spot, unless it's a very light scent. Um, but a scent like this, any kind of gourmand, I don't want to be super, super heavy because I don't want it to um, give people headaches when they come into my house or just overpower everything and then you can't enjoy any other, anything else coming into the house because you're just so distracted by the fragrance. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that my only concern right now is pretty much that, that little bit of darkness that is accruing around the rim. Now I will say that it seems to appear a little bit darker on camera than in person. One of the ways that I have tried to alleviate that is by, um, taking a, a tip that my friend Melanie has discussed in which I take a tissue and just slightly wipe the wicks before I light. Now, obviously you want to do that when the wax pool is completely cooled. You don't want to do that with a hot wax 
next pool. But prior to lighting, I will do that. I'm not sure if that's helping the situation or not. I will say that I have been using a wick dipper to extinguish these flames and I'm not having any issues with the wicks. The wicks are quite sturdy, um, no issues with them falling over. Not really having major carbon ball issues going on. In fact, I'm looking at this one that's been burning for about three hours. I'm going to blow it out as soon as I am done with this review. Um, and I'm not having huge carbon balls. I might slightly trim the end of the wick off um, if I get any of the, that excess carbon residue. Oh, I just got, I forgot to discuss the throw. The throw of this one is about a seven. Um, it fills up my living room quite well. I have actually been burning this one more so in my bedroom because I've been burning um, crushed candy cane in my living room just because I, I kind of enjoy that scent a little bit more. But I've been putting this one in my master bedroom and it's been filling up my master bedroom which does not have as high of ceilings and is obviously as not as large of a room as my living room. But the couple of times that I have burned it in my living room, I, I do smell it going into my kitchen. I don't smell it as strongly in my kitchen as maybe um, like some of the other candles that I've been giving a little bit higher throw number two. Um, but I would say this is about a seven, enough to fill up the open concept high ceiling living room. But um, I think that it performs a little bit better in a bedroom. I always make sure to burn my candles in well-ventilated areas. I don't let them sit in a drafty area. Um, and I find that that is the way that I typically am able to um, get the best performance from them. Let me know in the comments down below, have you picked up this candle? I know that it's a new one. How are you feeling about it? Or were you a lover of Candy Cane Lane and are you a little bit disappointed? Or does this new iteration excite you a little bit more? I'm always curious to hear about that. If you're coming across my channel for the first time, hi, I'm Katie. I would love to have you as part of my family here. We like to discuss, well, I like to discuss candles and sprinkle in a little bit of beauty content. So if that is something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up video, or thumbs up video, oh goodness, thumbs up button. It actually does help me out a lot, especially being that my channel is a little bit younger. Um, it helps kind of get my content out there. I want to say thank you so much for spending your time here with me today. And until my next video, I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.